All right, everybody, welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Pretty excited today because, a little bit nervous too, because today is the first day I start my resto mod on my 1973 Camaro Z28. In a previous video, I talked about this car and how my plans now, instead of keeping it restored, the idea is to resto mod it. I'm gonna start off pretty simply with uh, redoing the brakes uh, for safety, uh, adding rear disc brakes is my first step. And then all the brake lines are gonna be replaced, master cylinder is gonna be replaced, everything for the brakes is gonna be replaced for safety as well as higher performance. But the first step is to get the car in the garage and then I'm gonna show you the parts that I ordered and what I'm gonna put on this car. Okay, the car's in the garage. One thing I had to make sure of, and if you have a small garage, this could be important, is that part of the job requires you to remove the axles. And the axles are about, what, say 30 inches long or less, but say 30 inches. And so that's gotta come straight out from here. Now, of course, I can move the Hellcat to take out this side, but I have a wall on this side. And so I wanted to make sure, because you wouldn't wanna have to Take the axle and it hits the wall. You really wouldn't want that. You'd be screaming, crying, Ugh, it'd be horrible. Now I'm gonna use my quick jacks, which you can see here underneath the Hellcat. I'm gonna slide them underneath the car, uh, one and then the other, and then lift up the vehicle and that should make access very easy on this car. This is what I bought for the car. All this stuff right here. And this is from Right Stuff Detailing. I did research the different uh, rear disc brake conversion kits on the market. And in my opinion, the Right Stuff Detailing is the kit that gives you the best bang for the buck. Um, I did upgrade this kit, which you can do, to powder coated red calipers and slotted and drilled rotors. This is the kit. Uh, for the F body, which is of course the Camaro, it's an F body with staggered shocks. Let me tell you what that means. The Camaro has shocks that are in different positions depending on which side of the vehicle you're on. On the driver's side, the shock is towards the rear of the vehicle. You can see it right there. And on the passenger side, you can see that the shock is at the front of the axle, right, right there. Got to make sure that you get the right kit. And the main difference is that the caliper on one side will be mounted towards the front of the vehicle and the caliper on the other side will be mounted towards the back. So I would think that the shock is on the front, on the right side, passenger side, so the caliper would be mounted uh, towards the back of the vehicle and the opposite for the driver's side. So that means you get two, I think, right side calipers to make this work and also means that the emergency brake cable on one side on the uh, no, on the driver's side is going to have to loop around and come back while on the passenger side it's going to be a straight shot that means that one cable is longer than the other okay this all came in a really big box it's actually quite heavy um, but I'm pretty impressed with what I've got so far so let's go over what I've got first of all you've got the two uh, rear discs very heavy good looking one and two you got the two emergency brake cables one longer than the other you have the instructions and also they have videos on YouTube which we can also show you how to do this and of course I'm making my video as well and you got these beautiful calipers Ugh, quite heavy now I believe that these are Cadillac Eldorado calipers from which year I'm not sure but um, so if you ever need to get pads, you can get pads for these quite easily. This is equipped with an emergency brake and it's quite simple to install. So there's the calipers and dust shields, put these on and you've got the brake lines and I opted for the braided steel brake lines because I think that's a good idea. I think that will improve pedal feel. And in this box, it's probably the most important things of all. These are the shims. I 
These are all the shims, all the, the things that you need. And of course, this is probably the most important thing here. And that is the bracket which allows you to mount the caliper to your axle flange. These are very important and really heavy duty. Everything looks really high quality, so I'm pretty impressed so far. Taking the wheels off, and I've got the drums off as well. So everything's exposed. Now the first page of the instructions, it says this kit is for axles with a three and one eighth spread centered center on the top two bolt holes on your axle flanges. So that is, let's see if I can show you. This is the axle flange bolts on the back. Let's see, can you see? The axle flange bolts on the back, there's one bolt and there's the other bolt. So you have to measure the distance between the center of this bolt to the center of this bolt. Now luckily, luckily it is three and one eighth, not three and three eighths, which would mean I have the wrong kit. So after checking everything, it's now time to start taking everything apart. The first step is to get the axles out. Now this is a GM product, a Chevy, Chevy Camaro. So it has what is called C-clips. There's two little clips in the shape of a C that are holding the axle on uh, inside the differential. And so this axle just won't come out until you, um, you've got to open up the back of your differential, take out those C-clips, and then you can pull the axles out. Once you can pull the axles out, then you can get access to bolts that hold on the entire brake assembly and get that off. But the first step, is to get those seat clips out. And that means you have to take the rear cover off of your differential and drain it. It's gonna be a messy, messy, messy job. Okay, the next step is to get, this is a rod right here. That's gotta come out. This bolt is what's holding this rod in. Once that comes out, then you can access the C-clips. So the next step is take out this bolt. Okay, that bolt turned out to be a 5 16th. <laughs> okay, it's out. That's the end of the axle right there. And this smooth little surface here, that's the C-clip. So we gotta push the axle in just enough so that the C-clip is exposed. Then we'll try and take it out with a magnet. I will get my trusty assistant to push the axle in slightly. A bit more. Push. Are you pushing? It's almost there. Okay. Okay, I got a magnet. I'm gonna try and see if I can get this sucker up. I almost got it. As you can see, we got one C-clip off, and this is it. I don't know why they call it a C-clip. It's a mystery to me. There's a C-clip. Once you have removed your C-clips, the axle should come straight out without any trouble whatsoever. Now, I'm hoping I have enough room to get the axle out. I calculated, I'm sure I didn't make a mistake. Let's see, here she comes, yeah, see? Now you wanna support the axle when it gets towards the end because that is where the seal is. You don't wanna hurt the seal. And a little bit of fluid is gonna come out, no big deal. There is your axle. Okay, so the next step is to take off the entire brake drums. Now you don't have to disassemble all these complicated looking springs and everything else. All you gotta do is undo one, two, three, four bolts and this whole assembly will come off with the backing plate right here. The only thing you have to do before you do that is to undo your brake line. Now you can undo the brake line using a special flare uh, wrench to make sure you don't round it off but it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be reusing these anyway so even if I kind of have to cut it off that would be fine. And one more thing you've got the emergency brake cable coming through here and coming down through here. And I think it'll be easy to disengage it from the inside there once I have the whole backing plate off. Okay, as you can see, I've got one of the bolts off. And the way I did it was by breaking it. 
That's right. These are these bolts have been here since 1973. They are rusted. This one broke. I'm working on the next one. Now, it doesn't matter if this one breaks because the kit comes with new uh, bolts. You can see I've got all four bolts off, so the, the whole drum brake is ready to come off. Okay, so we got it off. Uh, it's just being held on by the emergency brake cable. Now you can see what we're working with here. All right, day two. The sun is up. It's a beautiful day. It's now one o'clock in the afternoon, so it's time for me to start working. Now what I'm going to do is clean the surfaces here because this is where the uh, caliper bracket is going to mount to, to the back of this with three bolts. And uh, I think this whole area has to be cleaned. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. Now, you could put the axles back in at this point because you just took the axles out just to get the brake, uh, drum brakes off. Now you can put them back on, but I'm not going to put them on yet because I want to have access here easily to clean this. So I'm going to put tape over the end of my axles to make sure no grit or dirt gets into those roller bearings, which you can see right there. Okay, here we have our incredibly beautiful uh, caliper brackets. This is nice, thick aluminum, very strong. It's almost beautiful in the way it's been machined out here. I really like that. And so this is roughly where it's gonna go, just like so. Now, I'm personally going to paint these because I want this to be more of a cast iron look to go with everything else and because it will really stand out right now. And of course, one more thing that they don't tell you in the instructions is that the hole fits perfectly. The bolt's gonna fit perfectly in the hole right there. Nice tight fit there. And uh, yeah, this hole has to be reamed out a little bit. These are the little details you have to think about. A uh, little extra work that you're gonna have to do to make this kit fit carefully. Very carefully. You may notice that on the driver's side, the axle flange here is kind of shiny, kind of shiny here. That's because uh, it doesn't, the rotor, the new rotor, which looks, <clears throat> which is quite heavy and nice looking, does not fit over uh, quite the uh, the axle flange here and also the center bore Doesn't quite fit over it now the other side it was tight, but it fit over it. No problem now. This was Predicted in the instructions the instruction says that perhaps you'll need a little bit of clearancing on your axles And that's exactly what's happened to me on this side and man are these ever gonna look good once this job is done Okay, according to the instructions, and of course we always do read the instructions, don't we? Uh, installing the new caliper brackets now. Finally, I'm ready to do that. And you use a quarter inch spacer to start off with. I'm gonna put this right like that. And then this is gonna go right here. And so we're gonna loosely put this in with the supplied bolts. Okay, as you can see, I've got the flange mounted. I've got the bolts in, three bolts, one, two, and three, and it's quite tight. Now that we have our caliper bracket on, and it should look like this if you've done it properly. You've got your spacer, our quarter inch spacer in there. We got the bolts tightened up, and we have a little recess on this side. That's where the caliper is going to fit in, and there you go. That's what it should look like. Now we're gonna put the rotor on. There you go, it fits on. And we're gonna secure it with uh, two to three nuts. So now we're gonna mount the caliper on the caliper bracket and see how it orients to the rotor. Okay, so here's our caliper bracket and it's going to mount just like so. Now you might notice I don't have any pads 
any uh, brake pads inside the caliper right now because I just think it'll be easier because they keep falling out. It's a little hard to mount this with the brake with the pads inside, and I just want to get a rough idea to begin with uh, where I'm located as concerning where the caliper is over the rotor. I'm going to tighten these up, and then we're going to see where we're at. Okay, as you can see, the caliper is now firmly on over the rotor. Okay, here's our caliper. Here's our rotor. And as I'm sure you can see, this little black mark is the center. I already marked that. I didn't show, I didn't show that to you before, but I marked the center of the caliper, which is the center point between the two uh, brake pads. So I installed the brake pads. I had them firm against each side and then I went to the exact middle between the brake pads and that's the mark. That's where the center of the rotor should be and it is not. Not even close. You can see that the rotor is way more this way than it should be. What that means is that this quarter inch spacer is way too much. We have to move the entire caliper this way. That means we've got to take out this spacer, take out the spacer, and we have a choice of other spacers. Basically, we have a spacer that is roughly an eighth. And a spacer that looks like it's, I don't know how big that is. So now, this is where it takes some time to get it right. I'm gonna have to take off the caliper again, and I'm gonna to have to take off the caliper bracket, and I'm gonna to have to either remove all spacers or put in a smaller spacer, I'm not sure which. Okay, so this is one part of the process that's going to take a little while for you to do, and but you don't want to compromise on this. You want to get this as close as possible to having that rotor centered in the caliper. Okay, one thing I noticed when I decided to put on the very thin uh, spacer is that, as you can see, uh, these bolts have a shank, a uh, portion where there is no thread, and I've noticed that it's sticking out, the shank is sticking out on the other end quite a bit. Now, yes, there is a washer, but I'm thinking that you might need more than one washer to actually make sure that the nut can engage threads all the way down without running into the shank here, right? So, uh, the kit is supplied with three washers. I think you should go ahead and buy more washers. And for this, because I have the small spacer on, and of course, it'd be even worse if you used no spacers, I'm gonna use at least two washers now for each bolt. Okay, I don't know if you can see, but I'm pretty well dead straight on. I am pretty well dead straight on. Indeed. The black dot is just about in the center of the rotor. So it looks like I made the right choice to go to the thinnest um, spacer. The other side of the car might be different from this. So you have to go through the process um, for both sides. Okay, so now that I have centered the caliper, um, now I'm gonna take it off again and load it with the brake pads and get that installed and then do final tightening for everything. And also, of course, gotta clean the surface of the disc because of, well, when I took it on and off, I've got uh, greasy marks on it. But also during shipping, it comes with like maybe a, a light coating of oil to prevent corrosion. So use some brake clean to clean these off uh, when you're finally done. Okay, the passenger side is now done as well. Both sides are done. This went essentially the same as the other side, the driver's side, except for one thing. As you can see, I didn't use any shims, any shims at all on this one. So each side was different. Okay, as you can see, all done and a thing of beauty. Uh, okay, next step is to uh, install the emergency brakes. Now there's a factory hole that goes right through the frame to the other side where it attaches to the rest of the car's original cables. And we've got this bright shiny new cable from Right Stuff. And we're going to insert it through the hole, right through there, right through. You can see that it's gone through. It's fitted into its bracket and it's going to be retained there by little Mickey Mouse ears uh, clip that we took off earlier and of course you save that and we'll just put this right back on. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, the cable is going to end up going in a curve like this. I'm going to take the, the cable, it's going to go through the hole, through the hole, and then it's going to go through the spring, through the spring, all the way. Then the hard part. The hard part's going to be we're going to have to squeeze the spring into its pocket and get the cable in its spot. There we go. So now I'm basically going to compress the spring so that it fits over this slot. <clears throat> I did it. <laughs> Don't ask me how I did that. It's really kind of hard for me to explain how I did that. Uh, I think I did it. Did I do it? And also, before you put this all on, you're supposed to move the lever back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that moves the piston out. Now, there's a way to move the piston out if that doesn't work. But if you can, let's see the piston right down there. If you can, you move that lever back and forth. So basically, take the spring out. Take the spring out before you put the cable in. Move the lever back and forth and you will see the piston move out. The piston will move out and you'll see how it pushes against the, uh, the pad and that's how your emergency brake is going to work when it's in operation. So you'll be able to see the piston will actually come out and stay out if you move the lever back and forth a number of times and that may be good enough. Then after you do that you got to put the cable through the hole through the spring and then using brute power you've got to put the spring back in so that it's around this area here and that it's in its clip it's a little clip right here you got to get the spring in that sort of its pad and then you got to make sure that the cable end is through the slot here okay I've got the parking brake cables attached um, maybe some final adjustment but basically this is what it should look like this is the driver's side You've got your little Mickey Mouse ear um, retainer. Cable comes along here. And this is what it should look like. I've got it adjusted almost all the way up. And I'm hoping that that will be good enough. And then it goes underneath the exhaust. And as you can see, the two cables join here. And this goes between your exhaust and your drive shaft and it should have some tension on it so that it doesn't hit either. Then your, your passenger side cable, and it's got a little uh, tensioner, you might say, keeps the cable in this proper position. And then this goes all the way back, and there you go. You got your little Mickey Mouse ear retainer there. So that's how your parking brake should look when it's all done properly, maybe. Looking good, brake calipers, brake rotors, emergency brake cables all installed. Now, gotta do the brake lines. Okay, I've got beautiful braided steel brake lines. I've gone all out, spending the big bucks. Why not, why not? Okay, this is where the brake line's going to attach. You're gonna sandwich your brake line with one copper washer on one side and another copper washer on the other side. So there's our brake line. So I'm just gonna hand tighten this bolt for now. That's our cable. It's going to do a nice little S curve underneath the emergency brake cable. And we're gonna hold it with this clip here. Now here is where we're supposed to weld on a bracket to hold this in place because this is where it's going to meet up with the hard lines. So this is the bracket they give you in the kit. You could weld it onto the axle tube right about here, which I'm sure I'll do in the future, but not right now. Okay, brake lines. The most exciting part. Now I've got this hard line mocked up on the driver's side, and I just used a regular um, hard line that you can buy at Canadian Tire or any auto parts store. Now I believe you can buy some that are specially made to fit with the uh, rear disc brake kit, but I didn't do that. So I'm making my own. I have to do the passenger side. I need to 
bend a line from here, bend it up and over. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm sort of placing the line in place of where I think it should be, like, like this. And I'm trying to make small bends to fit into clips. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm marking it with black marker so I can see where I'm doing the bends. Okay, then I take it over to my bench where I have my very simple bender that I bought at Canadian Tire up here in Canada, but you can get this anywhere. Uh, another thing to remember, uh, I just made this mistake. Make sure your nut is always near the end because you don't want your nut to get trapped in between two bends. Okay, brake lines are installed and everything is tightened. Okay, so that concludes this video, which was the installation of the Right Stuff rear disc brake kit for a 1973 Camaro. Um, now, I'm not finished with this job because I'm gonna replace all the brake lines going from the back to the front because that's just what you should do after a car's been on the road for this many years. And of course, I'm also gonna replace the front disc brakes to something that matches the rear disc brakes. So this saga will continue. This is just the first step. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.